Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Brian Puente. I'm I help support Adobe Creative Cloud here at the University of Arizona, um, along with uh, my team, which includes Alex. And then we're joined by um, Jessica from uh, Digital Learning. And she and today we're going to be talking a bit about Character Animator. I'll go ahead and switch to actually. I'll go ahead and share my screen here, and we'll talk a little bit about it, and then uh, we'll get started. So share screen. Make sure that I have optimized your video. Cool, share, share. Cool, awesome. And hopefully you can see that this character is being entirely controlled by my face, which is pretty cool. So that's kind of the idea um, behind character animators that we're going to use this really powerful tool to allow us to not only do the things like we were just doing where you can um, stream your, what they call a puppet, this character here, uh, to something like Zoom or whatever streaming platform you want, but also how we can talk about how this can, how we can use this to animate sequences and do and, and record basically video using our voice and then some um, triggers and things like that. So what Character Animator is, is a pretty full um, fledged suite of software that's going to allow you to take a character, throw a background on it, and then um, using a bunch of different tools, including a lot of really cool pre-built characters, if you don't want to create your own, to animate um, to animate an entire sequence or to use to present. Um, and there are lots of great tutorials in here across the top to help you get started that will guide you right through. Um, we're, gonna, we're going to jump in and kind of walk through a few of the different pieces here. So this workshop, um, you, if you have Character Animator downloaded, you can access these characters here, which will be the bulk of what we're using. We'll identify which ones we use when we get there. Um, but basically, we're going to walk you through um, the three different sections that we have here. Um, we have the rig section where you will basically create the character and how it's going to be set up. We have the record section, which is where we will set up um, our scene to record any live performances that we have. And then we have the stream section here, which is going to um, allow us to control our character as we're talking live. Um, but so that's kind of kind of be the order of operations, I believe, for this workshop. It should be really fun. Um, I hope you all enjoy it. Please um, let us know if you have any questions as we go, either in the uh, in the chat, and then we'll do our best to answer them as as we kind of work through. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing right now. I'm going to hand it over to Jessica, who's going to get us started. Hi, everybody. Uh I am a Yeti right now, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to talk to you and I'm actually going to stop the video for the moment. Um, I am going to uh, be showing you guys the rigging section, which is really where a lot of the magic happens. Let me just make this big uh, inside character animator. Uh, it's where you build your bones for your character and you add kind of like the flair um, that makes your character unique. Uh, so I'm going to click over here on the top left and the rig, and I'm gonna cl click rig. Woo! Words are hard this morning. <laughs> um, and I'm going to be primarily using Toll. He is the blue cat available in the home screen, if you're following along. I'll give you guys a moment to do that if you'd like. Okay. So I'm going to kind of just like talk about the layout for a moment of where, where things are, and then we'll go into like what they do. <laughs> Uh, so this is the project panel. This is where you will find all of your puppets, which are these like little kind of circle cone symbols. And then your scenes, which are the um, little clapper, movie clapper thing. Um, and then down below are the triggers, which we'll be talking more about a little later. Uh, but they are part of the the things that make your character unique. Um, they, you know, are different kinds of like animations that you can kind of pre-bake in. Uh, so at the push of a button, your character could wave or 
they could change their expression to be surprised or excited or um, like angry or, you know, little hearts throw up in their eyes, kind of fun little accents like that. Um, and then over here in the middle, front and center, is the uh, puppet window. And this is where we will be kind of looking at all of the different features of the puppet and how to rig it up. And then on the right, yep, right hand, I had to make the, <laughs> the right and the left, is the properties uh, window. And this is where uh, you'll kind of like fine tune and really add those um, like special uh, things like, you know, having a piece of hair every time you turn your head, you know, maybe it bounces or it sways in the wind or, um, you know, you want instead of using your webcam to control like where your vision and your character is looking, like maybe you want to use your, your touch screen or your mouse that can all be kind of fine tuned and controlled in there before you even hop into the record or stream section. Okay. So <laughs> rigging is like one of my favorite parts of um, character animator because it really is like building a skeleton. Um, and puppets have to be set up a certain way. And we could, <laughs> that's a, probably going to be a whole like hour and a half long workshop in and of itself, um, which is why we're using the puppets that are kind of built into the software to show you guys. But they have two, two main parts, the head and the body. And inside each of those parts are kind of everything that the puppet will be doing or can do, um, including, you know, all the things you would expect on a head, ears, eyes, different kinds of uh, like blinks and same with the body. We got left arm, right arm, uh, the torso, legs, and this one has the tail. So he has the tail because <laughs> he's a kitty cat. Uh, and when character animator is taught like in character and puppet layers, they're talking about the uh, characters left so our right it's a little it's a little weird <laughs> when you're adjusting to it but it uh flips. so yeah characters left is our right our their right is our left so i'm going to be talking whenever i talk about left and right i'm going to be referring to the characters left and rights um so back on track here, um, in this layer panel, uh, you'll see this like crown icon. That means that the layer is independent, which basically means that it can function and does things on its own. When a, a layer isn't independent, it will stick to kind of like whatever the, the like main body area or the origin point, which is usually like the middle or the center of gravity for a character. Um, it's, I can here, I'll turn, I'll show you what happens when, uh, if we were to make like the head, part of the head maybe. Here we'll make the eyes not independent. So I'm gonna to swap to the uh, record screen over here um, to just kind of demonstrate what, what happens when things aren't marked as independent and no longer like function on their own. Oh, let me open up my scene with Toll in it. So, oh. Why? Oh, why is it doing that? This is embarrassing. Usually it uh, has a weird reaction. 
where like the eyes are all of a sudden kind of like super warped Mm -hmm. and would uh, start like kind of doing what like stuck in place. Must be something with the this particular puppet. My bad. It's all good, but essentially like those crowns are there for a reason. They kind of Mm -hmm. inform the movements of everything else, correct? Yes. Yeah. That is a really great way to put it, Brian. (laughs) Are they informing Uh, the movements of everything else underneath them? Like the crowns kind of lead the the crown layer leads the layers that are next that are under it. mm -hmm. Okay. That is way more eloquent than I put it. Uh, all right anyway (laughs) um so kind of the different parts that uh make up building like the skeleton of your puppet are kind of these little guys down here um and these guys are like the different kind of main tools that you will use the handle tool is basically um it does two things it can handle like tagging which we'll get into here in a moment and it also handles uh kind of like the behavior which is you know these um kind of like customizations so you could put a handle on something and make a particle it acts as a joint like an elbow um It plays really nicely with our next tool that we're going to talk about, which is the stick tool, which is literally, I'll show you here. If you look at Toll's left arm here, you can kind of see it He has a little bit of a skeleton going on. Uh, He has a handle that's tagged as his left elbow. And he also has these two sticks, which are, you know, is a forearm and what's the, what's the upper arm called? Upper arm? I'll call it upper arm. Upper arm. I don't know. That sounds good. Uh, Anatomy. What's that? (laughs) (laughs) But uh, these two tools used together um, give give the character a skeleton. So when um, we're in the record area, if uh, we were to like move his arm, it would move more naturally and kind of like bend how you would expect and want an arm to bend. Uh, Because he also has this behavior called draggable uh, attached to his left hand. So in the record area, um, we will be able to kind of click his left hand there and we could drag it around and position it. So maybe we wanted him to wave at the audience or you know put his arms down and not in the kind of traditional in animation it's called like a t-pose where your character's arms are straight out and they're just kind of standing in a neutral neutral position um can you know put a hand on the hip kind of whatever you want to do there super awesome and then the pin tool uh kind of acts as as glue it uh, fixes the character to a specific position or uh, part of a character to a p- specific position. Um, so most characters will either have sticks or pins put in their their feet so that they're not kind of flying around in space, <laughs> which this character, I believe he has. Where are his, yeah, he has uh, some sticks put in his um, his feet with the fixed tag, which does the same thing as the pin. So if I were to actually just delete that, I'm gonna kind of actually show you what happens. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna swap to record here. And let me, change his position really quick so you guys can actually see what he's doing. You can kind of see how he, how he's uh, 
<laughs> not exactly on the ground anymore. And he's moving with my head, um, which is, uh, Brian had said earlier, is kind of the main way that you control your character in Character Animator. So we definitely want to want to pin him to the ground. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to put some sticks on him and then I'm going to tag it as fixed so he doesn't wiggle around anymore. <laughs> Oops. But, uh, and then the, talked about the pin, uh, the dragger. I kind of mentioned that a little bit ago, but that one, um, the arm, where are your arm? Left arm. It's uh, basically the draggable tag. So in the record area, if something is, has been tagged as draggable or the draggable tool has been used on it, which is the same thing, um, you can click that particular body part or item and you can drag it around and animate it as you like. And I can show you what that looks like. So for Toll, you can see he has the draggable tag on his arm and I can use my mouse to move his arm around. So maybe I wanted to put this arm on his hip and maybe this one in like a natural talking position. So he's like a little, a little more engaging. And then uh, Brian will go into this, but you can actually kind of record these kind of movements too uh, and swap your hands around. And it's, it's so powerful. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna swap back to the rigging area. Uh, and then the last one is my favorite. And it's the dangle tool. And what the dangle tool does is it gives uh, handles and things that have been like that you use the, oh my God, words. <laughs> the dangle tool does what it says. It uh, makes things kind of dangle or they're affected by physics. Um, so Toll actually has a few hairs that have dangles on them. So every time you move your head, it'll kind of jiggle and has a little, just a little bit of fun, fun personality. Uh, you can use it on hair. Um, it's kind of the popular way. If your character has like maybe ornate like jewelry or like a chain you can uh, use the dangle tool to kind of add some natural motion to that object or part of your character so as they move just kind of kind of naturally have that and it's not something you have to do okay <clears throat> excuse me and the so the major like part of rigging and kind of like building a character out before you start animating is tagging <laughs> so much tagging um so over here on the right hand side you'll see all of these tags and some of them are like things like behaviors or what we were talking about with like the draggable and the fixed position, um, the dangle. Uh, but then we have all of these like body tags uh, and they're all associated with a layer. So right now I have the left eyebrow selected and this has been tagged with the left eyebrow. And basically what these tags do is they inform the program what certain body parts are so that it can kind of uh, automate that animation for you. Um, you know, if you raise your left eyebrow, it's going to raise the character's left eyebrow kind of thing. Or if you're, you know, giving a little wink to the camera, it'll register 
which eye you're winking with because of these tags. So this one's tagged right eyebrow. You got. And because this is like a main layer with other layers in it. Where, why isn't that tagged? Tag this left wrist. Um, yeah, the tags are super, an, a super integral part of kind of building out your character because they just help the program understand like what, what certain things are. Um, I think a really great example of kind of like taking the tags even further because you can have multiple like head head views. So if you were to look down or to the right or to the left, those kind of tags would also come into play. Oh, is there questions? My, I don't know where my chat went. Oh, that's fine. Actually, I think now's a great time to kind of ask that we've covered a lot of ground here on yeah. how the background of a character is made. Um, what questions do we have here? Um, as you're kind of thinking about those, everything that we're doing here informs what's next. Mm -hmm. um, and all of these characters are built in either Photoshop or Illustrator typically. Um, and uh, all of these kind of pieces align with layers that are there. And uh, basically, all of that is kind of the bones behind the magic of how these things move and work. Uh, so what questions do we have about this um, rig section? Cool. I guess I have one. Yeah. Um, for all of those head turns, do you need to have all of those? Uh, you don't need to have them like Tull does not have any um, head turns, but they are a way that you can uh, kind of it, it increases the uh, kind of quality of your your puppet. Mm -hmm. um, the Windigo is a really great example and I will open him up. He's not one that's available anymore <laughs> in the um, the home section, but he's such a great example. Uh, I wanted to show him off. So you can kind of see he has, he's like really great. He has a, a front, kind of like a, a three fourths and a fully side. So if we had like two characters in a scene talking to each other, you know, instead of just looking at the screen and talking at the screen, they can maybe be looking at each other and talking. Mm. and you know conversating uh usually you just need when you're making head turns you just need the side or like whatever if you want to do a, a three-fourths that's good too you just need to make your artwork <clears throat> essentially have that that view and then the program because it's tagged in there will pick it up and swap, kind of swap that art out. It's really, really cool and automated. <laughs> so smart. Just the, the amount of depth that you can get out of these things. Yeah. Is amazing. Super cool. Thank you. Appreciate you answering that question. I'm going to go back to. What other Toll questions here? do we have before we continue? I wish Toll had <laughs> some head turns. He has so much. It really right. does. Sweet. I think we're set on questions for now. Um, what's next? Yeah, um, I'm going to kind of keep talking about tags here and some other like important parts that make characters characters. Oh. We had a question. Yep, oh, yeah. it'll be available online. Uh, but, awesome. Thanks for hanging out. I hope yeah, your internet you. gets better. <laughs> um, and that is, sorry, I'm going to go back. Uh, some more tags that are super important are these um, mouth uh, tags or visemes. 
<laughs> and these particular tags will help the software, whether it's reading from your webcam directly or a imported piece of audio, it'll help the software kind of associate a mouth shape with the right uh, like words and sounds that are happening. Um, and I can show you them in Tull's body here. Where's his mouth? I just had it. So it's in this uh, talk contents layer here. And you can kind of see he has all of these different layers um, that are associated with different mouth shapes and sounds. So that when you're talking or uh, if you recorded some audio, it will kind of swap between those uh, smartly. It's super awesome. And then let me glance over at my notes. Okay. So then this kind of leads into uh, those tag slash behaviors that kind of like give characters personality, you know, like the, the dangle and oh, let me turn his neutral mouth back on. Um, and like, there's, there's so many. Uh, so behaviors are really, really the things that like make the character unique or make them, you know, seem real and uh, something dynamic. Toll has nine behaviors attached to him. And you can see that up here in the puppet window, right here. If I, if I <laughs> go over it, it'll disappear, but uh, it's right here. It's kind of like that little box shape. Um, and when you hover over it, it's showing you the behaviors that he has attached to him. So he has that dragger that we kind of showed off where his arms were moving. Um, eye gaze, which uh, in smartly informs the artwork of your eye gaze that's from your web camera. So you don't have to, you know, animate, go in and like hand animate those eye movements if you don't want to. It can track your eye, eye movements uh, for you. Super awesome. Uh, handle fixer, that's the, the thing that was kind of attaching him to the ground. Limbs, um, self-explanatory, limbs. <laughs> Lip sync, that takes, that behavior is what um, controls those mouth shapes that we just talked about. Uh, so, that is the thing that kind of synthesizes the audio coming into the program and displays the correct artwork for the sound. Uh, physics, that's kind of controlling the actual physics of the environment that the character's in. So um, if uh, like he was in like a, a wind tunnel or something, like you could control all of that using physics. So you know, like his his dangles, anything with that dangle tag uh, is directly affected by that, those physics. So if we were to like mess with them, you know, his, his little hairs could like shoot to the side or, you know, flop, flop down really heavy because maybe the gravity is uh, really high. <laughs> um, and then the other kind of like ones that are always there like transform so that's gonna control like where you put him in space scale um kind of like the traditional transform uh in other adobe programs and then the last one is triggers 
And triggers are super awesome because you can, in all of these layers, build in different elements that don't need to be on per se, but you can give it a trigger and, you know, you could tell your puppet, you could make a piece of artwork, you know, where your puppet's pointing and you could make a trigger for point and the program will swap out the like hand or whatever um, to show that action. Uh, it's it's super awesome, and it'll you can like cycle through layers too, uh, for like maybe a complicated movement, like um, when we were all in the meeting room. You kind of saw with Heather, she has her little her little poofs that come on, and these are all triggers. So she has her little poof, and her hat pops on, and then she has her her head with the hat. And you can assign those to keyboards, mm -hmm. to uh, buttons on a keyboard, I think. Yeah, you can assign them to keyboard, uh, like anything anything on your keyboard. Um, and then you can also do like MIDI controllers that as well. So if you had like one of those uh, set up in, in your, your computer area, you could use that as well to set up your kind of like action area. <laughs> so with a button push, you know, your character could put their arms in the air <laughs> or make a hat appear. Uh, Toll has some really good ones too, I can show you. So he has like, uh, you were talking about point. He has a little point there. Let's see what else does he have? That was the only one I remembered. I have <laughs> goldfish brain today. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> He's a, a wave. And the cool thing about triggers and cycling layers is the wave is uh, a layer that's been cycled three times. So we have with a wet and push, you know, he waves three times at the camera. It's kind of awesome. And it just cycles through those layers, kind of doing that animation for you. Uh, I need tea. My mouth is dry. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Um, we're waiting. Any questions on what we've covered so far? What is the usefulness of triggers? Just having the pose to add it in quickly. Yeah, so the usefulness of triggers is not only that it's uh, easy to do, but as opposed to clicking and dragging a mouse to make him wave his hand, you can make it the consistent thing every time. If you are using that trigger multiple times, um, having it be uniform across just makes that animation smoother. So that would kind of be the idea is that you can kind of pre, um, kind of like a pre-record for a movement that's mm -hmm. just a one button press to do. Yeah, and... Uh... Triggers can also change um, like uh, your face shape, like the character's face shape. So if there was like an angry, an angry face or like a surprised face, um, it will kind of naturally animate that, uh, like what whatever you're doing in that situation with that particular face as well, with that trigger active, if that makes sense. And I'm sure... Uh, Brian will go into it when, in the record section a little bit more um, to actually show you what that looks like. <laughs> but uh, like Toll in particular has a bunch of expressions here. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna grab one. Let's go with cry, cause you know, cry. So I'm gonna go into record here. So like I can, you know, be sad and like move my head around, or I can also combine it with other things as well. So it kind of gives you a little more like fine grained control too. Um, triggers are fun. They're like the best part <laughs> with the pre built puppets. You could spend, I could spend hours just playing with the different layers and making silly things happen. 
the different triggers. Uh, let's see. Right. I think basically it's like the quick and dirty of uh freaking awesome Very i could cool. go oh i could go through the like actual um kind of like how you build the skeleton out if anybody's interested i'm not sure how how we are for time um could we maybe throw that at the end if there's time yeah cool yeah sweet like it like um like we said at the beginning these rigs are um, layers in Photoshop that we can kind of dig into or illustrate and show you how they work. But for the sake of time, if it's okay, let's go ahead and move on to recording. Sweet. All righty, let me go ahead and share my screen here. All right. Cool. So now that we know how to rig, we can talk about how to record. Um, I'm going to, sh I want to show you something that was kind of pre built already. I'm going to show you what it can do. Hopefully, you all can hear it here. You see, there's a little walking robot here. We can have multiple characters on screen at a time. But what we're looking at is something we have. We have the ability to do cool things like this. Welcome to a Better Cook podcast. On this episode of ABC, we're going to talk about something very basic: how to boil water. Now, there's a lot of confusion. Cool. <laughs> so hopefully, y'all could see and hear that. Uh, we ba basically were able to use the record section <laughs> to create this whole entire scene here with moving cameras and additional characters and things like that. Um, I want to kind of show you what uh, some of the things you can do. Now we're going to strip it back and talk about how we do it. So uh, the way that we will get started here is from the home menu. We're going to go ahead and we can create a new project here. So um, if we make a new project, we can label it. Um, it's just so I know, 601. Giving it good names is super important uh, so that you know where they are and kind of how you want to work with them. So we'll go ahead and save this. And I'll jump back to a more finished project later, but I just want to show you from scratch how you would get started. So I'm going to go ahead and save the project here. It shows up as a character animator project in our recent projects panel. You can also open up existing projects here. And then you'll see that we don't have a whole lot going on here. This is our empty record space. Um, so what we're going to start with is we're going to pick a character to work with. Um, since I don't want to create and rig up an entire character, I'll just use one of the pre-built ones. Um, we're going to go ahead and go with Tull just because we've been using him so far. I'm going to bring him in. Cool. We'll prepare Tull for us. And then here is our character in um, the record space. And you'll see on the top right hand side, you may have noticed that you probably noticed that the mouse has been moving the entire time up here on this top right hand side where it says camera and microphone. This is where you will be able to set up what's called a rest pose. So I'm going to go ahead and move my camera a little bit so it's a little more centered with me. And then you'll see if I pull this out a little bit, there's all these little dots on my face. And this is what's tracking um, how tall is reacting to things uh, based off of how he was rigged. So you'll see this button that says set rest pose. When you set rest pose and you want to record, my camera is down here, my monitor's up here. What, um, whenever we want to set this up, um, we will look at the monitor, not at the camera, but at the monitor. Um, and if the camera's in a decent position, hit set rest pose. And that way, once I do that right, try it again. Cool. So this is the center for him. So if I look down, he'll look down. If I move my eyes, he'll move his eyes with me that type of stuff. So we want to set this rest pose right here based off of our cameras. If you have multiple cameras, like I have a webcam and then I have a computer camera right here, I can adjust not only the camera, but the, um, I can adjust the camera from right here. So the FaceTime one, then I have this ProStream webcam, which is what I'll be using here. Cool, and you can check your audio levels right here um, in, your, in your settings for the, for character animator under preferences there's an entire audio section where you can set up your audio we won't dig into that too much but suffice it to say if you have multiple monitors that's where that'll be i'll leave this kind of big so you can kind of see how it's reacting to my face as i'm working here we pull up the chat just in case we have questions as we go okay cool got the chat up here so when we're in the record space here um there are really kind of three modes that we live in and they're all based off of where we are in the record space so play will play back what we have here. We don't have anything playing here. Uh, red will record. You may notice there's a lot of red that's not in this area um, with my face all over the screen. 
that matters. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But there's the there's stop, which is stopped. So it kind of lets me kind of look at the scene and like make changes and make kind of overall adjustments before I record. Um, then there's play, which will play back what happens here. Notice when I hit play, nothing's happening because we haven't recorded anything. And then um, we have record, which will record our movements here. So feel good about that. Any questions so far? Cool. All right. You can find all of your triggers over here on the um, left-hand side under triggers. You'll see Toll's got quite a few of them. If I adjust my windows here and I can adjust the panes just by clicking and dragging. And then there are keyboards, uh, buttons assigned to every one of them. So um, if I wanted to hold a point, I could hit, I think Q is what's assigned here. He's assigned there. If I wanted to flip his hands, it's W or flip that left hand. And there's point for the right hand flip and all these guys. And I can kind of change these just by pressing buttons here, which is super handy. If I need him to point at something or move something. Um, he also has gestures as we kind of talked about, but basically all of our triggers um, are available to us in this trigger menu here with keyboard shortcuts. If I wanted to adjust those shortcuts, it's pretty easy. I just click on like, so here for point it's P that makes sense to me. But if for whatever reason I want it to be something else, I could click right here, a little cursor thing shows up and then I could put it in zero if I wanted to. So that way when I hit zero, it does that, but I'm gonna go ahead and switch it back to P here. So basically the idea is that these are customizable. If you were using something like a MIDI controller, there's MIDI note here and you can assign like the note that's assigned with it. Uh, MIDI is typically for keyboards and musical instruments and things like that, but it can be used to trigger all kinds of things. But you have that there if you wanted to do that. For now, we'll just stick with the simple P points, <laughs> that type of stuff. Cool. So now, um, now that we're here, let's go ahead and we'll record something. You'll see kind of like Jessica was talking about before, if I move my head, like the physics on the hair change and things like that. So this is, the record section is kind of where the rubber hits the road for all of these characters. So let's go ahead and we'll start by recording something. All right, I'm gonna hit record here. Cool thing about, uh, so this little blue line right here, if you haven't worked with video before, this little blue line is called the playhead. And the playhead, uh, and the playhead will allow us to um, pick where in time we want to be. So if we wanna be 30 seconds into a video, we can click and drag to move the playhead to 30 seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and rewind it all the way back to the beginning. There's also these buttons right here uh, from start. You have, you have the home key, you just press that, or uh, you can inch forward one frame. But anywho, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and hit record here. It will count us in and then I'll say something. So let me go ahead and do that. And you'll see that every movement that I have here, it will record kind of as we go. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and hit record. Hi, my name is Brian. Welcome to my workshop. I hope you're having a good time. Okay, see ya. Cool. So when I record, you'll notice that a lot of things showed up down here on the bottom left-hand side. So um, these are all the things that were recorded with our movements here. So if I hit spacebar to play back, let's check it out. Spacebar or the play button. Hi, my name's Brian. Welcome to my workshop. I hope you're having a good time. Okay, see ya. Cool. So you see that like my head movements and all of that stuff recorded at the Hi, same time. My name's Brian. Welcome to my workshop. I hope you're having a good time. Okay, see ya. Cool. But you'll notice that um, his hands aren't really doing much other than kind of just hanging out there. So I might want to do um, another pass and just record on the trigger movements, like I like the head movement just fine. I'm gonna go ahead and mute this so that you don't hear the little scratching that's gonna go through here. I like the little head bobs and things like that. And by the way, like feel free to ask questions as we go. I'm happy to re-explain or retry anything we're talking about here because um, we, we are moving a little fast. So let me know. Um, you'll see that we have all of these different things that it recorded based off of what was selected over here on the right. So we have eye gaze, it was recorded because this was armed here. So check this out, right? So you see me moving and things like that. So if I turn off, I think it's face. So right now face is moving. If I turn that off, you'll see that now he's locked in place. This is one of the coolest things about character animator from a recording perspective is that we can do multiple passes for all the different things that we would do. So if really what I want him to do, um, if really what I want to do is record um, just how my eyes are moving. I can do that as a single pass. 
if all I really wanted to do was record how these things get dragged around, I can do that as a single pass just by unchecking everything else. Um, right now, lip sync is turned on. For this one though, I think I just wanna record triggers because I like everything else. So I'll just disable just by hitting this little red button. I'll disable kind of all of these different things except for um, the triggers here. Let's see, what triggers do I want? I said hi, so let's find out what wave is. I think I have wave. All right, cool. Wave is C. Cool. And let's do, so let's switch between point and wave. Cool. Now these are the only two things that are being going to be recorded here. So when I hit record again, it's going to count me in. It's just going to manipulate those two things. It would help if we could hear it. <laughs> By the way, undo com controller command Z will undo just like before. Um, I clicked on this little guy right here to turn off the audio. It's really hard to cue in what you want him to do if you can't hear him. So let's try it again. My fault. Thanks for putting up with me there. All right. So I got wave. And I got points. Cool. All right. Let's try it again. Record. Hi, my name is Brian. Welcome to my workshop. I hope you're having a good time. Okay. See ya. Cool. So you'll see right here under triggers, all of these different triggers were set up, right? And I recorded them. So I have the wave here. Hi, my name is Brian. So I felt like that came in a little late. So what I can do here is I can move this around. And by the way, this little scroll bar right here will let you kind of zoom in and zoom out on your timeline. So if I come back here and I listen to hi. Hi, my name is Brian. Let's see how that felt. Hi. Cool. So I can take this right here. This is the wave that I have. And I can click and drag this to move this to the left and kind of edit his movements. Hi, my name is Brian. Welcome to my workshop. I hope you're having a good time. So I'm going to move that. So the point comes in a little earlier. Welcome to my workshop. I hope you're having a good time. Okay, see ya. Cool. So I can kind of take multiple passes to get the different things that I want here. And this is a really simple example, um, but the idea is that we can kind of take this and kind of work with different um, layers here to kind of um, edit these things. So you may have noticed that I recorded, you'll see multiple takes of audio here because I hit record again. And I think that I had um, under the recording section, if I can find it here. I think I had hit the um, track turned on to arm this. So a whole lot of times, so we can record live audio here, which is fine. Hi, my name is Brian. But more often than not, to my workshop. I hope um, what we'll want to do is we'll want to um, we'll want to bring in some existing audio instead. Um, a whole lot of times, um, before you animate in traditional animation, you often record the voice first. So let's go ahead and bring in some pre-recorded voice. And then um, we'll show you how that works using this exact same setup. So if I come over here and I'm just resizing my window so it's easy to see, I'm just gonna go ahead and double click inside of this dark area here that allows me to search for um, different assets that I have here. And I think I'm gonna bring in, um, let me see. Let me go ahead and open up this project here. And I can open up um, existing projects inside of new projects to kind of bring in assets. So you'll see that now this showed up as a, as a different folder here. So I have this how to boil water that's really well recorded, which you kind of already heard already. And let's say that, that was the dialogue that we wanted to use. Um, so what I can do now is I can drag this in to our timeline. I'm going to go ahead and mute just by turning these off these other things here, and I'm gonna play through. Welcome to A Better Cook Podcast. On this episode of ABC, we're gonna- But you'll notice that his mouth didn't change, right? That's because these little uh, visimes here, the, the A's, the E's, the I's, the O's, the U's, the F's, and those types of different kind of mouth movements 
were all recorded based off of my um, previous, based off of my previous uh, character or my, my previous audio, I should say. Uh, have I been saying it wrong my whole life? I believe it is Vizims. Um, but I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure I'm right. I'm pretty sure I'm right. <laughs> but um, we could look it up. All right, cool. So what we'll do here um, is we have this new track of audio with this animated character, right? But now I want to re-track uh, these kind of um, these Vizims here. So what I'll do is I'll make sure that I have my character armed as, and, and recorded and that um, lip sync is turned on, I believe. We will grab this audio track, then under, um, where is it at? Did this just before. All right, cool. Let me grab this too. Puppet. Gosh, I'm trying to remember where this is. I had such a good idea. <laughs> um, yeah, so there we go. So under timeline, we're going to um, compute um, lip sync take from scene audio here. So what that will do for us is it'll take the scene audio that's available and then create the lip sync for it. We should change these visims here. So let me go ahead and go there, timeline. And then we should see these visims change. It'll analyze it. it and take a moment to do. Going through and it's basically listening through the audio and then based off of what you're saying, how you're saying it, um, it will adjust those visims for us. Cool. And there are our visims. So now if I play back, we should have the how to boil water visims in place, I believe. Welcome to a better cook podcast. On this episode of ABC, we're going to talk about something very basic. How to boil water. And you'll notice that because that audio is recorded really well, um, those visims show up pretty well here. Um, and like I said, it's very, very common in traditional animation to, and Jessica, feel free to quote, uh, fix, fix me if I'm wrong here. It's very, very common to pre-record your audio before you ever start animating. Um, so this allows not the this allows the voice to kind of be as good as it can. Then you can come in, bring in that voice, and then adjust. Um, then adjust the character um, movement to match that voice, which is pretty cool. And verify. That is, <laughs> that is, that is how it works. Uh, Perfect. I, I, also, Brian, um, I, I don't know if it's worth mentioning. Like, Please. You can also adjust the uh, visims as well in the timeline. So maybe you had a, a piece of audio that was recorded on not the best kind of microphone, and mm -hmm. maybe there's a mouth shape that doesn't quite go with the what the characters say sure you can you you just did it yep. Yep. <laughs> you can go in there and uh click in and adjust the mouth shape so that it makes the right right shape <laughs> of course <laughs> talking no, about great. mouths is weird let me go ahead and turn off lip sync here so we can kind of see that so if he had started something that started with uh with like a uh, sound we could go through here. That's a great point. Uh, we can right click on any of these visims and then change it. And if we wanted to extend a visim out, we can also click and drag that as well. It'll look kind of funny here, but if you, you know they were going like, um, if they were saying like phone book and, and like they really held the f in phone book, you could make them hold the phone book and kind of adjust that kind of on the fly. But you have kind of all of this control here and all these abilities to edit. And you do not have to do all of these things. You don't have to do it. You don't have to do any of this kind of like getting into the nitty gritty here. But the idea is that you have the capability to do so. And really that kind of that's where character animator, in my opinion, can really help set itself apart um, from a bunch of other type of animations because uh, you can animate with your face. So you, um, as long as you have the character kind of built out, it's a very, very powerful and really fun tool. Um, and there are all sorts of kind of interesting and elaborate things you can do with it here. So um, any questions on this kind of basic getting the character in, getting them animated and getting them moving before we move on? Cool. All right. 
So um, for the sake of time, I just want to talk about a few other things here. Um, you can have multiple characters on screen at the same time, which is great. Uh, so let's talk about how to move a character. Then we'll talk about how to add a different character. Um, and then we will talk about how to um, add a background. Um, cool. So what we'll do here is we're going to go ahead and bring in another character. And again, we use that records. We rec use that record function to kind of record, uh, to kind of switch who we're choosing. So we're going to go ahead and bring in Red Monster here. And click on Red Monster. He'll load as his own scene. So you notice that there are scenes here, right? So there's one that says scene tall, and then scene. They look like little clapper boards. Like have um, you ever seen like a movie where they're like cut, or right before they record, they have like a little clapper board that comes out. I can't find mine here. <laughs> but, um, but anyway. Um, so we're going to go and go back to the scene with Tull here, just by double clicking on it. And then here's our scene with Tull. We're going to go ahead and bring in Red Monster here. This little kind of character icon here brings in a character. So I'm going to go ahead and we have these little triangle menus. We can collapse that down. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and click and drag in the Red Monster here. Cool. So now I have two characters on screen at once. Um, so this guy's sitting on top of tall, so let's move him real quick. Under the transform menu, which is a very common space to find movement options in all Adobe applications, uh, you'll find not only scale, which is going to let you adjust how small or big he is, but right above that, you'll find position Y and position X. You'll also find anchor point Y and X. We're not going to talk about why you shouldn't move anchor points right away unless you, unless you want to. So we're going to go ahead and kind of leave those alone. We're going to go ahead and adjust position X just by clicking and dragging on the zero here. Click and drag to the left, he'll move left. And then I'll click um, and drag on position Y. We can slide up and down to kind of move him where we want him. So there we go. That's great. Now we'll go to Tull by clicking on Tull here and do the same thing under Transform. Kind of give everybody their own space. So we have kind of a host and co-host situation going, right? Cool. All right, so that looks good. And then we we're talking about boiling water. So we'll probably want to put them in a kitchen. So let me see if I can find the kitchen image here. So the kitchen kind of shows up as an asset and I can click and drag this and drag it underneath there. The little blue line indicates that we're moving underneath something. Put it under there, cool. And now we have our kitchen, but the kitchen's too small. So what we'll want to do is we'll want to go down to scale and scale it up. And cool. Now they're both in a kitchen. Now when we talk about boiling water, it may make more sense. So let's go ahead and play it back and we'll check it out. Go ahead and show this. Welcome to A Better Cook Podcast. On this episode of ABC, we're going to talk about something very basic. How to boil water. Cool. So now we have that. Um, but yeah, this other character is kind of sitting still here. So let's bring him to life a little bit. Here's kind of the cool thing. Um, if I go to Tull here, we'll arm him and then we'll turn on kind of the usual stuff. See how he's like, how, see how he's moving now and things like that. Um, if I click on this guy, I can kind of arm him and get him moving too. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the um, lip sync for him. Oh, whoops, I clicked Tull. Make sure you're on the right person. You'll see the options there. there. Turn off the lip sync here. So that way you can just kind of move with my head to kind of make this feel more alive. So I'm going to go ahead and record. Welcome to A Better Cook Podcast. On this episode of ABC, we're going to talk about something very basic. How to boil water. Now cool. So I recorded some movement for uh, this guy here. Welcome to a Better Cook podcast. On this episode of ABC, cool. we're going to talk about. So now you can see that he's kind of moving along with it. So now the scene kind of feels a bit more put together, like multiple things are moving. But the idea is you have multiple puppets in multiple spaces doing multiple things. And I think the really elaborate one that we pulled off here, which also has a camera movement, so you can add a camera and move that around. Um, and if you wanted to add a camera, like if we wanted to. If we go to scene here, or where is it? Let's just go ahead and select this in our timeline. Where's the camera? New scene camera. So under scene, new scene camera, 
this uh, brings in like a camera that you can move around and adjust and you can adjust like zoom in and zoom out. Um, and the reason why you want to use a camera as opposed to scaling everything is that once you have the scale set up normally for the scene, if you just wanted to zoom in on a person or, or, or a character, you can do that. And then you can even set this camera movement up as a trigger. So we can uh, make this a triggerable shot and then assign like a button to it. So that way, when we wanted to kind of cut into this close up, we could do that. And I won't go too deep into that, but the idea is that you have all of this flexibility where you can literally set up an entire animated scene that you can kind of switch however you want. All of these triggers and things like that work in the stream setting as well. Um, so pretty cool. Hopefully you think it's neat, we do. <laughs> um, and I hope that you get a chance to kind of try it out and work with it. So. Um, kind of showing you how that works. Are there any questions on this so far? And by the way, like if you change these positions and you don't like them, a lot of these little guys have little um, X buttons here that we can press that will allow you to reset to zero. You can also just click and dial in the number you wish. Cool. Awesome. What questions do we have while I grab the next scene to show you how to export? You can load up this next scene here. Give it a second. Cool. All right. So this is a lot of the same stuff. Um, you can see here when we created this guy, we went into the Photoshop document and like put the University of Arizona logo there. That was inside of the character document there. So you can kind of customize these characters um, after you learn a little bit more about it. We'll kind of do that but the idea was we kind of wanted to this is uh in front of old main here at the university of arizona and these are the steps he's standing on the steps um talking about whatever he wanted we choose in the boil water because we have clean audio for it but you could re-record this to be talking about welcome to the university of arizona we have this little robot guy here just to kind of add some depth and you'll see that another reason why we really like the zooming a camera is that we have stuff like this And then we kind of zoom in on him. The robot kind of walk by. We can kind of continue talking. Cool. So, and these were set up. Um, these camera movements were kind of set up just by adjusting these camera movements and then doing what's called keyframing or automation. And we can get into that if there's time here, but I do we want to get to the live stream bit. But to share, it's pretty easy. A little share button on the top right hand side. We can export the video with Adobe Media Encoder. And then it will pull up and prepare our scene. We can save it as an MP4, save it where you want, shows up as a full video, and you can export it wherever you like. Happy to go into that in more detail later here, but I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen so that Jessica can wrap up with how streaming works. And the good news is that everything that we've talked about here builds. So as you move from left to right, the more you understand how rigging works, the more you understand how recording works, and the more you understand how streaming works. So they all kind of play together. Um, it's a matter of... I know we've talked about a lot of stuff here, but it's a matter of getting in and practicing a little bit and trying stuff out and um, just pl playing with it. And I think you can get some really cool results. Jessica, I'll let you wrap it up. Yeah. Um, so let me share my screen. I just closed it. Oh, uh, uh, Jessica, as you're doing that, there was a good question here. Oh, I'm going yep. to pull up the next thing um, and I'll read it out to you. Um, so are characters created in Photoshop or is something like Illustrator more common? I have my answer, but I'd love to hear yours. Yeah. Um, so I have seen Illustrator used more um, just because of the nature of Illustrator using vectors. Um, those vectors come in to uh, Character Animator as well. So uh, when you have like a camera movement that maybe zooms far in, you're not losing a ton of quality on the character um, because it's in a vector format from Illustrator. But there are like Photoshop is totally acceptable as well. There's definitely like the, the strengths of each of the programs could play into the type of character that you're trying to make. Um, uh, like if you're wanting more of kind of the traditional cartoon, I think Illustrator would be a great option. But if you're wanting something maybe 
more painterly or, you know, like a character like Heather here who has, you know, kind of like some fun features and this really great like hand painted background, it looks like. Photoshop's probably the right choice. <laughs> so it depends, I suppose is what I'm trying to say. And there are so many different styles of puppets. <laughs> like I think there's a claymation one, like on the first page, it's yeah. a doctor like that you probably make in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. um, just because it lends itself better to like giving you higher fidelity on those images. You just need to like not zoom in as much if you're trying to get them really tight. Or use that uh, larger, mm -hmm. uh, like high fidelity images. Uh, awesome. That's a really good point. Yeah, great question. Thank you for helping me answer, Jessica. Sorry for the interruption. Oh, you're fine. Um, so the last section here is the stream section. And uh, it's honestly one of the, the funnest parts, I want to say, uh, of Character Animator because you can create things on the fly and use your character in, like you saw at the beginning of the workshop, in a Zoom call. Or uh, you can stream to a streaming software like OBS. Um, and then stream that out to, you know, Twitch or YouTube or whatever um, kind of like live streaming platform you'd like to go to. So instead of, you know, your your face being, uh, you know, on, on the camera, you could have a avatar or a little character kind of run in the show instead. It's super awesome and super fun. Um <laughs> So uh, similar to the like record section, we have kind of our little scene here um, and the timeline down here in the left-hand corner. The timeline is very simple compared to, <laughs> it's the same, but it's all hidden, uh, but it's, it's basically the same one. So if you had a background, like I could drag this classroom into my scene for my live stream. It's really a big picture. So we'll fix that in a second. <laughs> but uh, I could give my character a background and put them somewhere, um, which is super fun. And then my personal favorite part of the stream area that I wish existed in the record area was this control panel here. And this is where you can control your character. And it also has a kind of visual interface of the different triggers. Um, so I can kind of kind of get a little preview of his different expressions. Um, you know, like I can see his, his little greeny face here. His like, huh? Confused face. Um, and these... Uh, Controls are, are clickable, but also, you know, if I were to hit the keyboard uh, shortcut for it as well, it, it goes off. I like, I, I like clicking them <laughs> personally. <laughs> uh, and then uh, we also have the same kind of properties over here. So um, you can kind of see we have the, the lip sync that's, you know, the taking in the way of my mouth is moving and translating it through. Um, the eye gaze, the different draggers. So you can kind of like set your character up for, you know, a, a live stream pretty, pretty, pretty easily. Those are the words I'm looking for, um, which we'll do right now. So maybe I want Toll to be front and center. We'll make him kind of big. Maybe he's going to be my Zoom avatar. So we'll, we'll kind of put him like, like he is in my uh, screen here. And then I'm going to put his arms down. And we will zoom out on this classroom. Make it look kind of normal. Awesome. And here, uh, we kind of have the, the basics set up for the stream. Got our, our background 
and our character. And you don't need a background. Um, kind of the awesome part of uh, character animator is it will uh, translate that transparency. So if you had a, I think it interacts with the Zoom backgrounds, but um, say you were doing a live stream um, and you had you know, like a video, a, a video game or um, you were with other other people who were their avatars. Yeah, see, Brian has his little avatar there interacting with the, his Zoom background. Um, you can kind of put it, put him in that space, which is super awesome. Uh, so streaming does require um, a third party plugin. Uh, I'm gonna preface that now um, that you have to download and it's called an NDI controller. Um, and that basically makes a, another video output uh, that you can connect to Zoom or OBS um, to, to form that bridge. So instead of like your webcam being the, the camera that's been picked up, it's your character animator stream setting. So um, say I wanted to stream Toll to Zoom. I will go to edit here and go to my preferences. And to stream, you need to have enable Mercury transmit selected. And then the NDI output, which is that third party plugin that I mentioned um, that you have to download and install. And should we share the link here for it, Brian? Yes, please. Okay, I'll grab the link yeah. here. I already shared it. Oh, Perfect. thank you. Yeah. Love it. Um, but it's a it's a pretty quick download. Uh, I just didn't want to force anyone to download software, especially a third party plugin. <laughs> they didn't want to. So um, you'll select NDI output after you install the software. Click OK. And then to connect it to Zoom, it'll be a little different. I'm on a, a PC. Um, so my setting up is a little different than uh, if some, if you're using a Mac, but I will go here and I already have it open in my system tray. Um, down here, it's the NDI virtual input. I will right click that. And this is my desktop. And then from there, I'm going to click character animator. And this is going to tell the, like, it's going to be the bridge that connects character animator stream to wherever I want it to go, whether that's uh, Zoom or OBS to be used on like a live streaming platform. Um, yeah, but whichever way you want to go. <laughs> uh, but once character animator, I don't want to deselect it because then it'll disconnect, <laughs> but just select character animator. And then in your Zoom settings, uh, for Zoom in particular, it'll be in your cameras. It'll be called, I don't know if you can see it, uh, New Tech NDI Video. And then you can just select that and it'll load your character when your camera is on. So I think I just flipped it. It takes a second sometimes. There we go. So then if I go back to the character animator screen, so, there he goes, there he goes. And then as you can see here, I can kind of put on a put on a show. I have my controls here that I'm clicking. And if you look at my video, my character's kind of going along with the different buttons I'm pushing. So uh, this is kind of like a fun, a fun way to replace yourself in a Zoom call or, um, La, like live streaming with uh, avatar is becoming really popular right now online. Uh, it's called like VTubing. Uh, it's it's pretty popular in Japan. I, I, I like it. I think it's really funny. <laughs> the characters and the, the different kind of like designs are always very intricate and cool. But uh, 
you know, they use their little avatar and sometimes they'll just be talking to the, to their chat, their little live chat going on, or they'll be playing a video game and um, they have their controller set up so that they can change what their character's doing, kind of like you would as a, as a real person. So it was like live streaming, like a, right now, like giving this tutorial, you know, I could position my hands just like I would. It's, it's super, it's just so fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, everybody's and it, putting in. A... <laughs> it's been used pretty extensively on, on all sorts of broadcast uh, productions mm -hmm. as well. Um, and the kind of cool thing is because it's all controllable, um, if you had a really ornate setup, you could have someone set up as the performer and then you as a controller or whoever could be like controlling the additional like movements, actions, and triggers while that person is performing. So you can have literally a live performance with these characters. So puppet puppeteer and voiceover kind of happening at the same time. It's pretty, it's pretty slick. Mm -hmm. I think that's how a lot of the like professional uh, like VTubers do it as well. They have their uh, like the, they have the actor quote unquote, who's, you know, in charge of moving around and, you know, controlling the puppet. And then you have the person who's like, oh, she said something, you know, she's mad. Hit the, hit, hit the button to make the mad expression or the, you know, oh, oh, they're crying. <laughs> Sync up, which I uh, imagine is kind of a crazy job to have. <laughs> yeah. But I think, but, but um, yeah, I think that the point is that like, this can be a very, very, um, easy to use tool to stream, but it can also get very, very um, big and mm -hmm. ornate if you want it to be. So you're working with professional grade stuff here, which is cool. Yeah, and it's it's fun too. Um, like maybe you, you didn't want to get ready for the day and <laughs> you can make yourself a little <laughs> avatar set up and there's still kind of that level of engagement Um because depending on the character that you're using, you know, there's still eye movement. Like people can still tell that you are uh, like here in present. You're just an avatar. <laughs> I think I will be attending all meetings this way now. I think it's a good idea. <laughs> I think it's a really good idea. It's very professional. <laughs> cool. That's awesome. But that's basically uh, <laughs> streaming in a nutshell. Um, we do have a YouTube tutorial for setting up uh, the NDI controller to OBS, which is a popular streaming tool. Um, it's a little outdated. It's a it's a by one of like the developers for Character Animator, but uh, we could link that as well if you're familiar with the software. Um, and are interested in using it yeah. to uh, stream live. And it, and yeah, and if you're not familiar with it, like so character animator is great and we can do things like set up backgrounds and things like that really easily. But the benefit of pairing it with something like an OBS would be for if we are, if we want to basically change what's happening behind us on the fly. Like if you were using this for an active lesson where like you had a digital whiteboard that you were writing content on, and you wanted this character in the bottom left hand side talking while you're doing that going to something like obs would give you the ability to do that significantly easier when, um than if you were to do it just from character animator character animator is really great at building um the character and giving him a space giving him or her space to live in the environment but um if you wanted to like stream other live content pairing this output to something like OBS that's better at that is a great is a great solution. Mm -hmm. That's a, a good point um, because you can't uh, like connect a different background essentially to your stream. Yeah. You kind of need that intermediary, which is OBS mm -hmm. to do that. But if you don't want to do it and you wanted to set up just like Jessica's is here, like it's perfect for that. Mm -hmm. And you can absolutely set up multiple backgrounds it's more like that live think of it more like if you need that live feed um then you probably want to pair the output of this to something like obs 
I trigger background swaps um, Mm -hmm. with keyboard shortcuts. It's like at my classroom here, but maybe I wanted to be outside. Uh, I could, if I had a background um, that was like outside, I could associate that with a keyboard shortcut and swap it around. (laughs) Awesome. Quick scene change. (laughs) Love it. Cool. Uh, What questions do we have here? We've covered a lot and it's and it's been really fun, but what questions can we answer for you? While we're doing that, highly recommend just, um, <laughs> thank you for hanging out. Highly recommend just taking <laughs> advantage of the pre-built-in stuff there. And even if you're interested in building characters, going in and like digging into those characters and seeing how they're put together is mm-hmm. a great way to kind of learn there. Um, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the characters, like even these ones, you can go in and open their um, source like files and edit their artwork as uh, I think Brian had mentioned it earlier. They added the University of Arizona logo to Toll Shirt for that how to boil water Mm -hmm. um, scenario. So you could start with a character and, you know, like if you liked Red Monster, you know, you can make Blue Monster Mm -hmm. that has, you know, instead of spikes, he has maybe like little tentacles or, uh, you know, maybe he's on fire. (laughs) um really like creativity is yeah truly the limit and an easy way oh go ahead oh i was gonna say an easy way to um access that artwork is over here in the project panel if you right click the puppet that you'd like to edit you can click edit original and then it will bring up the original project and files so you can kind of easily swap between programs and get that artwork absolutely and all of these characters um, that you're getting through the character animator um, set up are licensed for you to use manipulate and alter to your heart's content um so you don't have to run into any like copyright issues or anything to use these characters kind of out of the box or modify them which is pretty cool mm-hmm Awesome. Well, what other questions do we have before we wrap this workshop up while we're pulling up the Photoshop file here? Oh, I closed it. Oh, it's fine. It's cool. You go in and edit the Photoshop file. We promise. (laughs) (laughs) And I opened it and then I closed it. Oh, it's totally fine. Like a very smart person. It's happened to me so many times. All right. It's like, I don't need this. I can close it. (laughs) Cool. But we have all of his well, different huh, cool and you can go in and change the eyebrows and things like that mm-hmm. it's a great way to kind of no pressure jump in and uh kind of get playing with character animator yeah i'd highly re- recommend the whole like totally change like add a logo to a shirt type of thing it works really well yeah it's a easy swap Mm -hmm. changing the color cool well we are getting close to time um so um we'll be around if there are any other questions but i would like to thank you for joining us here at this um bringing your characters to life with character animator workshop we had a ton of fun hopefully you learned some stuff and we look forward to hopefully hearing about your zoom meetings and how you're using this um in your workspaces thanks everybody have a good one We're going to infiltrate all (laughs) professional meetings now with uh, (laughs) avatars. (laughs) I'm all about it.